If you change your mind, you change your life, just change your mind. The Lord loves you. He's standing with his arms wide open. Cause this day's for you Don't you let this opportunity pass by you yeah. oh, Change your mind mm -hmm. oh. How I love Jesus yeah. Genesis 1 and 1. Put that back up there for me, Tina. I'm going I'm to stop cutting up in a minute, Allie. I might need this more than y'all do. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, <laughs> mm. we are still in this group recovery series. I'm sorry, Tina, put the recap slide up first. I'm just delirious. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to stop trying. I'm trying to stop. Just, just go there with me real quick. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like huh. All right, here we go. Recap first. Woo, first sermon in this series. Somebody shout group recovery. You know they did come out singing. They did. <laughs> Who are we supposed to send first, Kiana? <laughs> yeah. Send Judah. So in this effort for group recovery, the first thing that we have to have to embrace individually is that you know you got to pursue knowledge. I got to become very knowledgeable in the thing that I hear God calling me to. If you agree with that, somebody say amen. amen. And so then I take that knowledge and I go back to my groups. We all have groups. My household, my family, my friends, my job, my business. Whatever you're taking responsibility for. Your community. And our, our purpose in coming back is that we got to form agreement with one another that we're going to move forward together, that we see eye to eye and we know what matters, what matters, and what's petty is petty. We're pushing that to the side. We're going after the bigger things. And then there's an agreement to share our knowledge and our resources. This is if we're committed to coming out. The next thing that you got to realize again individually is that while you're with us in your group, we're going to help you develop your gifts. God calls them gifts. The world looks at them as talents. And so what we want you to become is good with us so that we can present you to them. And what happens when you're presented to them, they are amazed, and you gotta understand this, oftentimes they're more amazed at your talents than they are at your God. But your talent is the way to pull them to your God. Somebody say amen. And so your talent on display in the world allows us to capture resources from the world and pull them into the kingdom to uplift the kingdom and speeding up our recovery process and when we send you out into the world, guess what's required? Boldness. 
You got to be willing to say what it is and mean what you say because your yes is yes and your no is no. Integrity means something in the body of Christ. We don't, as Paul said, don't go beyond your measure. No false advertising. Just be bold at the thing you've been called to do. Am I right about that? Two weeks ago, we talked about buy it and own it. We talked about wisdom, wisdom. Use what you've got to get a better understanding. And God promise you that that wisdom will return you multiples. And today, in our effort to come out, question is posed to you, where is your hammer? All right, what does that mean, Jones? Watch and see. Here we go. Genesis 1 and 1 again, Tina. What I want you to see in here, Genesis 1 and 1, reveals two things that I need you to see. It reveals a desire. Somebody say desire. It reveals, it reveals a desire, but it also reveals how to make that desire a reality. And it's a desire that you ought to be able to relate to because I'm, I promise you, all of you have this desire. So let me see if somebody can pick this up. Somebody tell me just by looking at that, what do you think the desire is. I just heard the Holy Ghost say, slow down. <laughs> I done got excited and worked up, Regina. <sighs> Breathe. What desire? Ma, I want to run. I'm trying not to run. My, my feet on fire. I do. I, I'll tell you, I need to be quiet before I cut up in here. I got to give you this message. What is the desire that you see up there? You see a desire? Hmm, okay. Anybody else? It's literally in the text. Say it again, Kenny. Everybody in here, somewhere in your life, you desire a beginning. Am I right about it? As a matter of fact, I want to do something. Do a little experiment. with. Me. We're going to take about just 10 seconds to let you visualize what area that is. Let the Holy Spirit show it to you. You ain't got to say it out loud. Just picture it. Where do you need a new beginning right now? I need you to see that. Take a few seconds. I need you to take that thought and place that thought right there in front of you. Here's why. Because I need you to hear the rest of this message through that. Whatever that area is, Jennifer, whatever it is. That you say, man, I need a new beginning right here and right now. Keep that top of mind. We got to have a new beginning. Hmm. But in order... I said the text shows you a desire, but I said it also shows you how to get a new beginning. What must you be willing to do? Create. You want it, but there's something you got to do. It ain't going to pop up. You must do what? Create. Let's dig into that today. Because I think this is going to bless you and going to set some people free. Before we start dealing with, with, with create, let me, let's go ahead and dispel some, some issues we might have with beginnings. Because if we talk to most of us, and if we're honest, we're not really too crazy about beginnings. We're not, talk, we're not crazy about beginnings because we know at the beginning of anything, we look clumsy. At the beginning of anything, we don't look real uh, uh, skilled at it. So oftentimes, we avoid new stuff because we don't want to look bad in front of folks. We, we rather gravitate to the old stuff that we're good at that no longer works for us. <laughs> yes. But another reason we avoid beginnings is that we have defined it in a way that's flawed. Oftentimes, when we think about beginnings, we internally process it as starting over. Nobody likes the thought of starting over. And beginnings are not actually asking you to start over. We ain't asking you to do the old thing again. A beginning has embedded in it newness. This is newness. And you have to learn to pull down your guard where beginnings are concerned because beginnings are paramount, foundational 
to our faith. If you don't receive beginnings, you won't receive our faith. Because you got to think about it, and I'm, I'm going to try to stay on task. If, if God started out with beginnings, how important are beginnings to him? Which means that when you start out with God, guess what needs to be important to you? Beginnings. Beginnings matter so much to God that God gave you salvation. What is salvation? The old church said it's being born again. Not born to do the same thing again, but born to do something totally different. And in your process of being born again, you mess up, you and I mess up, don't we? And so what does God give us when we mess up? The ability to repent. Repent is another way of God saying, here's another beginning. And so you cannot avoid beginnings. Hold on to that because that's some of the resistance that we face over the years that has kept us stuck. Not only kept us stuck, but kept us in generational curses. Well, we just inherited, they handed off what they've been doing, and now we are doing the same thing. At least we can relate to family, but we don't like being miserable together. At least we got something to talk about together because we're all in the same boat, but most of us secretly want to come out of it. Am I right about it? But I'm afraid for a new beginning because oftentimes new beginning means I got to leave old people. Not always permanently, but, at, but always temporarily. Say that again. Not always permanently, but always temporarily. Because I got to get away from your influence. And I'm going to explain it to you in just a minute. It's not that I don't love you. I just love you so much that I listen to what you say too much. And so I keep doing what you do. And so I need to get away from you just for a little bit. I'm coming back, but I'm going to come back healthier. Are y'all listening? Where am I really supposed to be in my notes? All right. Beginning. And so to have a beginning, you must have a willingness to create. Willingness to create. Lord, fix my will. Mm. All these things are coming together. And so I'm going to try to get through this because I know we worship a good little bit. I'm going to give you my nuggets and try not to drag it out. When we first are introduced to God in Genesis 1 and 1, we are seeing a God who has a desire and we're seeing our God who's willing to create to fulfill that desire. You got to pay close attention to that because you and I have been created. I know this is elementary, but talk to me. You and I have been created to imitate who? God. God. And so you got to pay attention to what he does. Now, just gravitate toward the miracles. Pay attention, as we said two weeks ago, uh, how God handles everyday stuff. And so he start, he steps into nothingness with a desire. And to have that desire fulfilled, he has to be created. You and I are supposed to mimic him. So it's about these desires. So let's look at Psalms 37 and 4. Y'all know this. Read that out for me. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let me tell you how I believe most of y'all hear that. <laughs> if you delight yourself in God, you fall in love with God, you serve God, God will give you the stuff you desire. Right? Right? God is, listen, please catch this. God is saying, if you fall in love with me, I will give you the desires you should have. Oh, wow. Hmm. See, we, we want God. I see some of y'all grinning at me like, doggone it. No, we'll just wait. Because we showed up 
to God with desires, right? But where'd you get them from? <laughs> where'd you get them from? Because you went with God, you got to God and said, hey, by the way, Jesus, all my life I've been wanting and it blew my mind because I was studying, and I try not to get too deep, but I do anyway. If I would give you all the stuff that I study, we'd be here for two weeks. But I was studying, I was, I was studying desires rise, and the Holy Spirit said, what does that mean? Look it up, look it up, look it up. And when I looked it up in his original language, the etymology of the word, it said this, Jamal, it blew my mind. It said, from the heavens. Then I had to be honest. And then I said, most of my desires before I got to God came from the earth. Most of the stuff you think you want came from what you sow with somebody else. Am I right about it? And so we show up thinking that we want what they got. And God is saying, when we get together, I'm going to fix that because what you should desire ought to come from him. Why, God? Because that's what I'm going to support you with. That's what I have prepared for you. See, what happens when you really start giving yourself to God, heaven begins, and it ties up to what Keanu was saying earlier, heaven begins to pour out. What did Malachi 3.10 say? He said, I will open up the window of heaven and I will pour out blessings. What are blessings? Heaven says, I got your desires. I got the desires that fit you. I got the desires that fit your strengths. I got the desires that heal your weaknesses. I got the desires that make your life make sense. You've been wondering why you was born in that family? Let me tell you why. Here go the desires. Let me tell you why you're your gender. Let me tell you why you're your skin color. Let me tell you why you was born in this situation. Get under this flow where it began to explain your existence. God was in very, very intentional with you. Our problem is we were designed to do something else, but we keep asking for desires we got from people. Because the true, your, your desire, I want to do this so I think it'll make me more popular, it'll make me more light. And so we're trying to take this thing that God has designed and use it for something it wasn't equipped for. No wonder we're depressed. No wonder we're unfulfilled. Watch this. No wonder we keep connecting with the wrong people. You, you, I don't know why this popped in my head. You, you, had, you, had to have, you had to live in the hood for this. Some of y'all grew up in middle class families, so y'all ain't gonna understand this. But speaking of where's your hammer, you know, sometimes we didn't have a hammer to put stuff in. What you use? See, y'all from the same hood as me. Y'all from... <laughs> right. That, that heel of that shoe. <laughs> See, my babies grew up with real hammers. I grew up with a shoe. But what would happen? What would eventually happen to the heel of that shoe? Because it wasn't designed. It worked for a little while, but you shortened its life. So, so, so I, can, I can force myself on something and it'll work for a little while but it feels like I never got to life ain't nothing more depressing than to get to something you aim for and then realize you don't really want it but you got it now ain't nothing more depressing than that I got it now I gotta maintain and manage it now God I wish I never got it And so what, 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 heaven, what heaven desires to do, heaven says, I want to download. God's been telling us all this whole time. Y'all remember the story about Jacob's ladder? The image of Jacob's ladder, what was ascending and ascending? Angels. What's the purpose of angels? Messengers. They're coming up and down just to tell you what heaven been saying about you, Michelle. Purpose of the Holy Ghost living inside of you is try to bring back to your remembrance what your original assignment was. So heaven is constantly trying to get you in the right vein so it can tell you who you are so you make sense to. You're trying to figure everybody else out. The thing that you struggle with, you don't know. Because imagine, imagine if you knew you 
You knew where you need to go, where you shouldn't go, who need to be connected with, where you need to be connected with me. My life would be simplified if I knew why I was here. And so God is saying, I'm trying to give you the proper desires. And said, when you get, when I tell you what it is, okay, who's already heard what it is? Y'all are some scary people because y'all telling y'all ain't telling the truth. Raise your hand, Sean. You know what God said you're supposed to be doing, right? You know, because sometimes we accidentally get in the flow. Yes, sir. And normally we act. Normally, what happens? What happens when we normally accidentally get in the flow? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Right? Right. Oh, I'm trying to not get ahead of myself. I'm going to explain to you why we do that. Me and Todd was talking about it this morning. He said, why we fight it? I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. I'm ready to... to... Everything I told you we was going to do, Tina, we ain't doing. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so, so heaven is delivering these new desires. Because all of us have been called to create. Nudge your neighbor. You're supposed to tell him, say, you should create too. If he's a creator, you are too. (laughs) You are called, listen, please get this, because we're talking about us, right? Group recovery. So you're supposed to create and assist. Oftentimes, I said that backwards. You're supposed to assist, then create. Tina, I know this was the last scripture I got. So we all out of order today, so let's roll with it. G- give, me, give me Luke 16 and 12. I know that was the last scripture, but we're going to put it in right here. Luke 16, 12 says this. And if you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? Ooh. If we're all called to to build, say I'm called to build build. and I'm called to assist, assist. but I'm called to assist before I build. Is that the order? And so until God pushes go for you, you should show up somewhere else with your hammer. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you build yours. Because the way God says that if I don't help you, he ain't going to give me mine. And, you know, it, make, it makes a ton of sense to me. You know why? Here's why. It makes a ton of sense to me because the moment you get ready to try to build yours, guess what you want? Some help. And folks have been watching how you haven't been helpful. You ain't been dependable. We always got to find you, call you, track you down. And now you got this great idea. And we, as, as spiritual as we can, we're going, so? Because first of all, listen, if you haven't mastered the art of following, why would I trust your leadership? Because if I'm going to hook my wagon to your wagon, I'm not only hooking my wagon, I'm hooking my name. Yes. I'm hooking my name, I'm hooking my goodwill, I'm hooking my, my credibility to you. But if you prove to me that you showed up and did what you're supposed to do as a follower, I got greater confidence in you when it's time for you to lead. The whole reason God put you in a position of followership so that you can learn without it really costing you. Let's make it personal. When y'all follow me into doing some stuff, and if it don't work out like it should have worked out, who they blame? <laughs> While I'm sitting there knowing... Exactly. Who didn't show up? Who didn't do their part? Right. But that's, but, and here's what's funny. Even if they figure out who didn't do their part, they say that's one of Jones people. Yeah. That's what they say. Ain't that what they say? That's what they say when they call you on the phone. Right, yeah. <laughs> when they leave them ugly little messages for me. And so what happens is God allows you to get them under a leader so that the leader provides cover. So that if you do mess up on the backside of the leader, you, it's not as consequential as it would be if you were up front. And so the leader provides you opportunity to correct yourself. At, watch this. Is this is real. Correct yourself at the leader's expense. 
so that when you're out front and your day will come, you don't pay that bill twice. Am I making sense? And so heaven is saying, this is what I want you to do, Stephanie. This is what we want you to do. Come out from over there. So we think come out from, come out from among them is come out of the club. That's too superficial. All that means is the flow went in the club. It wasn't about the club. Don't come out the club and still do nothing. You might as well stay over there. So I, I ain't all the stuff I don't do no more. No, God ain't concerned about what you don't do because that was forgiven. What God is waiting for is what you're supposed to do because you want God to say, well, well done mean I did something. He ain't going to say, well, not doing. But Lord, I stopped going. I stopped. He said, he said, I forgave you for all that. By the, by the way, I healed you of all that. That was me taking those desires away because I tried to give you some new ones. I took the old one away and you were empty. I took the old ones away. You were standing there empty. And then there was the demons that were assigned to you. They came back, as scripture said, and found your house swept and clean. And empty. So he says, listen, I got these seven other demons she ain't even encountered yet. Since she didn't bother to put something in the house, we gonna put something in the house. And the latter state was worse than, that's wild, Lady Jamal, because he's talking about somebody saved. You mean I can be saved and then I can fall off worse? If we will be real honest right now, y'all would stand up and testify. Pastor, that's true, because what happened to me was. <laughs> so God is saying, there's something I want to tell you. Something I want to partner with you on that we can create. Genesis 1 and 1. Put it back up for me. So it says, you get a new beginning. I got to create. I appreciate my media director because I'm throwing it all off today. Go to the create slide. So what does create mean? Watch this, Alex. When it says that God created, this is what we got to get. Somebody, Okay, let me back up because I'm all over the place and I'm talking too fast today. Come back. Picture the thing that you want a new beginning. Y'all see it? Yeah. Only way to get a new beginning is to do what? Say, I got to create. I need y'all with me. Now I'm going to show you what you just said you got to do. Create means to shape, to form. What? New conditions and circumstances. Always with God as the subject. That's what it literally means. To shape, to form, fashion. New conditions. Here's where we've been missing the boat. Y'all paying attention? Yes, sir. Let's do a quick survey. How many of you have wanted new beginnings, but they haven't come yet? I'm, I'm getting ready to show you why. So pay attention. Because the fallacy in your faith is that you, you asked for it and you waited for it to come. Oh. Oh. You asking for it really was, watch this now, you asking for it should have been you agreeing with God. Mm. Y'all with me? Because yeah. according to our faith, we agree with God when we're ready to do what? Find the scripture. Walk together. Ah, girl, you trying to get your, you get your license. You're going to get your license. How can two Except they be. So when my request, I'm not, re watch this now. I'm not requesting something I created. Y'all listening? I'm not requesting something I'm imagining. I'm requesting what I. God says, oh man, we got so much. I'm trying not to overwhelm y'all with stuff. Let's back up. But y'all know the stuff. When, when, when we're supposed to confess unto the Lord, right? Confess unto the Lord. Confession means, Greek word homo, logio, homo, same word. Confession means 
Not, hey, God, I did so-and-so. God saw what you did. Confession means give God back what he said. Same word, back to God. That means God and I now agree. If he and I agree, we can walk together. That's why when you got saved, we did Romans 10 and 9. Who wrote that scripture? God, not Pastor Jones. And so you read what God said. Now I'm saved. Because I agree with what he said. I gave him back what he said. I didn't have to be creative. I just had to be repetitive. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness. Are y'all with me? Yes. So God is trying to get you, say to me what I've said. Yes. And when you, when, when you do that, heaven says, okay, Michelle finally agrees. And God, God says, come on, now let's. Because mm. yeah. who's walking with you? We're having a great Bible study today. <laughs> the, Bi- the Holy Spirit. Y'all know that's his job, right? Yes, sir. But if you're not obeying with what God's saying, he's sitting around going. The Bible said we grieve the Spirit. You think you're grieving the Spirit because you're sinning. You wouldn't have been sinning had, you, had we been walking together. Wow. You're sinning to, to take out your idle time, but, but if you actually would walk with me, you got too much going on to be doing some of that silly stuff you used to do. Mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, paraclete. That word paraclete is what the word spirit was translated for in, 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 in Acts, and it means the one who walks alongside. And so he's been waiting for you and I to get together. Am I giving y'all too much? So, so he says this, I want, this, this is how I got good to me, he said, okay, I got to create what? Say it to me. What we got to create? Read the screen, people. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of conditions? <laughs> what kind of circumstances? <laughs> Always keeping who in mind? No. Why would God have to put that on the backside? Because he know us. <laughs> Now we, we can create some stuff, and God ain't nowhere in the picture. <laughs> New conditions. That's the part that got me. Conditions. Conditions. Listen to what conditions mean. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to make your life make sense. You ready, Angie? I know you're working that camera, but you listening? Okay. Conditions, watch this, this blew my mind. I'm going to make it make sense to you. It, meant, it said this, mother, it said, conditions mean to speak together. To speak together. In other words, my conditions really represent the stories I've been told. Mm. What kind of condition God says to create? New. What's interesting is that circumstances are the byproduct of conditions. So conditions are the stories that I've been told. What are the, where do those live? Where are my circumstances? Outside of me. And so all that's all my circumstances, circum around, all those stances that are around me all begin in my, based on the stories I've been. Hmm. You wouldn't have these circumstances if your mind didn't allow them. And the only reason why your mind allows them is that you have been told stories. Your faith is based on what you, faith comes by, faith comes by, faith comes by the stories I've been told. And I believe them. And I'm so, watch this, I'm so God-like. Oh my. I'm sure my five percenters who watch it go. I am so God-like that I created my stories. I've been wanting my circumstances to change. I didn't know I needed to first change my. (laughs) 
And the reason my stories didn't change, because I didn't get my desires from I got my desires from. So, so no wonder I look like the. I got desires for heaven, but I look like the. Because the world handed me my. Oh, y'all so smart. Isn't that making sense? So I need God to heal my stories. No, 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 no. He said, no, we're not, gonna, we, we're not even going to heal them. We're going to make some. See, see, when we teach like this, Charles, it ain't spooky enough for some folk. No. Now, if I said, turn around three times, jump over the pew, high five your neighbor, and it will happen by Tuesday, <laughs> I'd get a love off. <laughs> but this makes sense, don't it, Nikki? Yeah. I can see that I have lived out the stories I've been told. It makes so many scripture make sense. Quana, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it comes the issues, the limits. I was told some stuff that I kept safeguard in my heart. And no matter how many times God presented something to me better, like a dog, I went back to my um. And see, we've been, uh, listen, 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 listen. We've been upset with ourselves and with other people for backsliding. As if people really want to go back to the stuff they cried and slobbered over at the altar about and fasted and prayed. But the problem was they ended up back in it because they never built something to go towards. The process ain't just saying, I'm sorry. The process is saying, give me what I should have so I can let go what I shouldn't. Let me say that again. Give me what I should have so I can finally let go of what I shouldn't have. Because we will die for familiarity. Even if, because if it's familiar and we know we ain't ignorant, we know. Scripture says you are not ignorant to the, to the wiles of the devil. God is saying you see what that joke is doing to you. But you so obsessed with familiarity that you'll hold on to a burning pan. If you look around and see others are holding on to theirs. Because this is what we do. Familiarity, familiarity. What word is in familiarity? Family. Teacher. Because we didn't come out. Another motive for coming out. This is a us thing. Because if we don't come out, somebody's going to still be holding on to the old stories. And if you're you holding on to the old stories, they're still creating old circumstances. And those old circumstances perpetuate old stories. And see, what happened was hard about us. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. What's hard about you right now, I can tell you right now, as God is changing you, the conflict that you have in the family is that you are living out a new story. And you want people in your family to come with you. But here's the truth. The old story looks easier than the new. And so if you put people in front of the old story and the new story, they are more likely to choose the old story. First of all, it looks easier and there's more of them over there. Misery loves. Uh, Is it now making sense? Somebody ought to look at themselves and say, oh my God, I've been writing the wrong story. Can I help you out with something real quick? Check this out. Catch this. And so if you, if you understood what I just said to you, how should this affect you going forward relationally? You cute and all, but what's your story? <laughs> what, you, what, you, what you write? What, what, what do y'all believe? Let me, let me, let me, yeah, let, you know, let me go to the cookout. Let me go on to the family reunion, you know, not, ain't, 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 ain't your boo yet, but I still want to go. Let me, let me just go and be a fly on the wall because I want to see 
<laughs> I, I want to, matter of fact, I don't, I don't even want to see you. I want to see the generation above you. I want to see, see what they've done. Cause, cause that's, that's who taught you. You. Cause you probably being impressive right now. And that's going to wear off. Cause that's exhausting to pretend to be somebody that you ain't. The real you going to come out like that little jack in the box. After a while, they're going to come out when you least expect it. So, so, so I don't get caught off guard. Let me go meet your people. Let me go. If you, you would have got this message 20 years ago, it would have made your life better. Somebody shout amen. amen. I've been writing the wrong story. Let's wrap this up. Let's, let's wrap this up. So, so, so let's make it very practical. So who in here does, who in, and, and, and don't make it up because God prioritizes stuff for you, whatever the weight is. Let's use this as an example. Who, who in here desires a different financial outcome for you and your family? Okay. So I've got the desire. And the desire says, desire, I asked you, you heard how I said that? I said you want a different financial outcome, right? That implies that you don't like the present story. Right? And so we got to create a new one. So that means that if you want a different financial story, you and God got to create something that proves it. You can't keep playing around with the restaurant idea. You got to go ahead and create it. Put, watch this. Yeah. How do I do that, Pastor? Go back to the recap slide. Because I, I said you got to go create it, now y'all got scared. No, we gave you the formula. The recap slide. What's the first thing you got to go get? Mm. So I got to go learn. Then what's, what I got to do next? I got to tell my people. Why you got to do that? What? For what? So we can be in agreement, so we can hold you accountable, so we can share some information. You ain't got to learn everything. I got the banking part. You got, don't worry about it. Go find it. We've got a real estate agent. We'll go find the place. You go learn how to make money from cooking them things. You know how to cook, but do you know how to make money with it? Because we, 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 watch this, we're real gifted and talented, but we don't know how to build a business around the talent. Right. Jeez, sir. So I got to go get some knowledge. I got to get my people together. So those of y'all that are trying to change your life, but you ain't telling nobody what you're doing, you don't messed up the formula. And I, I can look and say, I know some of y'all are out there doing it. You're trying to do it. You just want to present it when it's all done. You can't get past yourself because you, you need us. You need a community. You need somebody to be in agreement. God said, write the vision, make it plain. Watch this now so that he that reads it would run with it. That he ain't the same person that wrote it. I had to, when I made it plain, that means I'm knowledgeable. I know what I'm talking about so much so that I can write it down, hand it to somebody who's on my team, and they can run with it. Not walk trying to figure out, what is this? But it's so clear because you're so knowledgeable that I can go run and do my part. And they're over there assisting you in theirs so that when yours grow up and they go, well, April, I help you build this, but now it's time for me to do my own thing. You ain't mad. Now it's time for me, Pastor. I've been serving you for a while. I feel like God has called me to go build another church. I ain't mad. You assisted me. Now our roles will. Because if we're together, I don't have I don't have a problem with some in some places playing the leader and some place paying the assist. You do know in basketball, you get credit for the assist too. Mm. I'm making sense, amen. Yes. And so you learned up under me and you got your confidence and you got your knowledge and now you can go do your own thing. We ain't competing, we expanded. We ain't competing, we expanded. We ain't competing. Because we're all in the same kingdom. And so you go do what I've been... If, if, the thing is, I'm so blessed when I see people who are with me go do what I do. Folks that come out and say, look, they over there copying you. They doing the same thing you did. I said, that's what they should do. Why you want them to do something different when we prove that this works? I got a, bro, I got a friend of mine that's in North Carolina who started the church. I helped him do it. His we believe statement is almost identical to ours. They said, are you offended by that? 
No, I'm confirmed. Because it wasn't my we believes. I just got up under the... And so the copyright belongs to... Am I making sense? Our problem is when we think it's ours. No, I'm just a flow through for God. So if, if, if it blessed me and it still blessed you too, cool. The water can't go through the pipe without the pipe getting wet. Am I making sense? Yes. Questions. <laughs> Since we all are here anyway. Questions? Put the takeaway up there. I'm going to stop right here. I'm dead serious. Questions? We're going to do church like I feel it today. Anything I say was confusing? I'll go back to it right now if you need it. Condition. Yes, sir. You talked about um, those stories that we tell ourselves create conditions outside of us. The stories that we were inherited, okay. that we now have on loop. Because it said, it literally means it says to speak together. So those stories are building blocks in us. And we're not living beyond it. If you think about it, I mean, think about how, how much you do what you saw, right? And the only time you did something different is when you went away. <laughs> I want to say something political. <laughs> Trying to see how brave I want to be. Because I, I know they watch. Um, what the heck? Boldness is required. Do, do, you, do you know why there's a huge agenda now that targets us our college campuses? It's because that's where you go change the most. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's where you go have to live with people that don't look like you. Yeah. And maybe even people you thought less of all your life because your neighborhood, your cul-de-sac, your community, your, wherever you live, never exposed you to them. And now you're on the same campus with them, living with them, sharing space with them, realizing that the stories you were told this might not be true. They smart too. So if you ever want to keep some people in an old vein, you try to keep them from exposure. Because mm. you start to rattle their stories. You know, I'm making sense. The conflict that you have with people oftentimes is, is, is not so much that you did something to them, is that or parents with kids or whatever, is that they received another story. And now they're trying to figure out whose report will they believe. Am I making sense? And the best way to prove that your report is true is by doing what God says, because your, your report should bear fruit. So I don't even have to argue. I just go, I just Vanna White them. Point to the fruit. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yes. Most of us have to argue and fight because we have no fruit. We just have something we're saying. Because yeah. you can talk without creating. Sure. Most of us just repeat and echo what we heard, but we never go do what we heard. But we want credibility because we can talk. That's what social media does for many people. Give you a platform just to talk and you have no fruit. And so it's training us just to be obsessed with what people say and we don't go look for fruit. And so we chase around empty folk. Under the illusion of followers and friends. But Jesus said, this tree ought to be known. Not by how well they put 144 characters together on Twitter. Ought to be known by the fruit we bear. Something ought to show up. Not, a, not just show up, but live beyond you. Your story should still be being told long after you were in the grave. That's what legacy is. What stories can be told about you? You don't like them? Build something different. Change the narrative. If you've been writing the wrong book, stop writing. New chapter.
<laughs> I found my hammer. <sighs> we are created in the image of God, which means like him, we are all creators. Everybody has to show up, all of you, to be a part of this ministry. I'm not obsessed so much anymore about you filling out membership cards. We only want to do that so we can send the information to you and plug you in. What I'm more concerned about is, did you bring your hammer? Because to be a part, you said, I'm showing up to help you build. And I'm going to help you build because in my assisting you, I am gaining experience. So that when God sets me free, I'm not as intimidated by what I heard. I can say, I saw, I saw Minister April do it. I, can, I saw Minister Todd do it. I saw Deacon Jamal do it. I saw Greg do it. Deacon Greg do it. I got people I can call. Yeah. My, com yeah. my community yeah. is, is, is not only counting on me. They don't just have expectations. They have assistance. Don't expect nothing of me if you can't help me too. That's a healthy community, isn't it? We've all been called to create the new things that will cancel out the old things that led to bondage in the lives of our group. We all have been handed spiritual hammers and we are connected to the master architect who will show us how to build the new things that will provide new stories, new conditioning that will be told, which will ultimately produce different outcomes circumstances and fruit. So where is your hammer? No wonder Paul said, by now, you ought to be teachers. Why? Because I need you to tell some new stories. Come on, stand to your feet. Whoever you go eat lunch with today, I want you to ask them, what's your story? That should have been the title, shouldn't it? What's your story? What is your story? And then, how can I help you write a new one? Oh, man, isn't that wonderful? Just the thought of that. Somebody saying, okay, that's what you've been writing up to this point. But, uh, how can I help you write another? Yeah. Come on, bow your heads for me. We want to extend this opportunity, this offer one more time. That if you came in the doors, maybe you missed the altar call earlier. As a family of believers, you need to join first. Everything we talk about, we assume that you have the Holy Spirit to help you get it. That's who walks alongside of you. He can't walk with you if you're not his. And to be his, you don't have to clean anything up. You don't have to fix anything. You just have to say yes. And then part of the journey is the cleanup process. He's got you. I promise you, he does. So if you're ready for a new beginning where y'all can begin to create your life, you don't have to walk down here right where you are. Just lift your hand in the air so I see it. Hmm. Amen. I see you over there. moment to give God that yes. See what he's saying. Listen, ask the Holy Ghost right now. 
What is it that you would have of me now? What chapter should we be writing? The book of Revelation calls you a living epistle. That means you are a living book. That's being written. God, I don't like those last few chapters. But I know those are my circumstances. Recondition my heart with new stories. You know why that's so important to me, Stephen? My quest for my children has been, this has been my prayer since they were babies. I would say, Lord, help me to defeat my demons so that Satan has to come up with something new for them. I don't want them to have my struggles. I took care of those, so I need you to come up with something new for them. We're going to change this narrative. Make him work harder. Father, we stand before you as sons and daughters. You said we have to come before your throne with boldness. We're not bold because of who we are. We're bold because of what you can do. And we admit that we've been engaged in some struggles because we have not embraced this walk with you. We've heard that term so for all of our lives, our walk with Christ. But we've been trying to walk empty-handed. Today we pick up our hammer and we begin to build whatever it is you show us so that it will begin to give new stories. This new ministry you called me to, we'll build it so it can have new stories to tell. This new business, we'll build it. This new relationship, this new marriage, we'll build it so we have a new narrative, new stories to be told. New stories to be lived out. New stories to be inherited. We got clarity today, God. And we know the enemy wants to steal that. We ask that you protect that. Send the angels that have been assigned to each one of us to reiterate this, this, this new understanding over and over and over again. And then Holy Spirit, if I find our, ourselves, we find ourselves in a situation, you bring it back to our remembrance. Help us to remember the new story we're living out. The old has passed away. All things are now becoming new. In Jesus' name. Wait, we got to lead this person to Christ. Come on, I got carried away. I'm, come on, repeat after me. Father, thank you for Jesus. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And because of my faith and because of my confession, the Bible says, I am now righteous and I am saved. Holy Ghost, I have a place for you. Come live inside of me. Walk alongside of me. Teach me. Heal me. Show me who I really am. And I will build it. In Jesus' name, let's shout amen. Amen. God, we bless you. We love you. Keep us because we got work to do. In Jesus' name, I love you all. Amen.